welcome everyone this morning or this afternoon where you may be to uh, my presentation about pre-stressed concrete connection and components from related to structural design of precast concrete garages. Today we're going to cover the three parts of the seminar. Um, the first part I will cover uh, my comments about connections. The second I'm going to uh, review horizontal components, the aspects of double T's, inverted T-beams, spandrel beams, slabs, and stairs. And in the third part, I'm going to talk about vertical components, precast columns, pre-stressed columns, ramp walls, shear walls, and stair walls. There's a lot of content. Um, I tend to, uh, to, to try to put a lot together when, when we do these uh, webinars. Um, and so some of it may go a little fast, but there is certainly the opportunity for you to type in your questions. We've got periods for um, short breaks and time for you, um, uh, for, me, for me to respond to your questions if you will type them in and let me know what you're interested in learning about. Today the objectives are to provide an understanding of consideration for precast concrete connection design um, in parking structures. We're going to particularly look at load paths, anchorage to concrete, loading conditions, and types of connections that are used. Um, we're going to try to provide an understanding of consideration for horizontal components for pre-stressed, precast concrete parking garages. Um, we're going to look at double T's, inverted T-beams, spandrel beams, and flat slabs and stairs. And then also to provide an understanding of the consideration of vertical components for precast, pre-stressed concrete garages. We're going to look at interior columns, exterior columns, ramp walls, shear walls, and stair walls. So if you have work in precast concrete or you get a submittal of a precast concrete set of erection drawings, you can get overwhelmed by a huge array of detailed connections that show every nut and bolt and part and, and weld. And each one may be slightly nuanced and a little bit different from the other. But at the level of the erection drawings, these are the detailed instructions to the field of exactly what has to be constructed. And it also provides the picture for the detailers to ensure that what they are providing in the components all comes together in order to allow the assembly of the garage. So the, the kinds and the, and the level of detail that we do in our shop drawings may be much, much higher than anything you would see in a set of contract drawings. Um, it requires a, a great deal of attention to detail and to paying attention to the design principles and particularly to the load paths to ensure that these connections provide the function that they are intended to provide without providing unintended consequences. ASCE 710, section 1.4.2, very directly requires all parts of the structure between the separation joints shall be interconnected to form a continuous path to the lateral force resisting system and the connection shall be capable of transmitting the lateral forces induced by the parts being connected. Any smaller portion of the structure shall be tied to the remainder of the structure with elements having strength to resist a force not less than 5% of the portion's weight. This provision has been in ASCE 7 and in the building code for as long as I can remember and it has continued to be something of a source of confusion because any smaller portion of the structure shall be tied to the remainder of the structure with elements having a strength to resist a force not less than 5% of the portion's weight would overwhelm the requirements for the design of the lateral force resisting system or even the diaphragm in the lateral force resisting system in many, many cases. A long ago interpretation letter was issued relative to this statement that clearly indicated that the intent was that any small part be connected to the whole for this 5% of the weight. It did not intend to apply to the complete load path through once the lateral force resisting system had been reached, which includes the diaphragm part of the lateral force resisting system, 
which has well-described and prescribed load requirements in the code. So this, this is an important part of establishing the principle of the continuity of load path, but it has really a limited application when it comes to the loading requirements because it simply means that any part out there that is connected to the lateral force resisting system through a load path must have at least this strength until it reaches that path. Full rest of the day.